praise you, our Father. We praise you, our Lord. We give you glory, O oh God. You deserve all of our worship. Jesus, you deserve all of our praise. You deserve it, O oh God. So from the depths of our heart, this morning, we say, blessed be your name. Glory to your name. We ascribe all power and dominion to you, the only wise God. Thank you, Father. Be magnified here today. We welcome your presence here, Holy Spirit. And we surrender to you completely, oh God. And we ask that you will pour out into every single one of us, oh God. And pour until we overflow. To the glory and honor of your name, we pray in Jesus' name. And every person that has to say a big amen. Has God been good to anybody here at all? If God has been good to you, say hallelujah. I can't hear you. If God has been good to you, let me hear you say a mighty hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. All right. Look at your neighbor and give them a smile. All right. Okay. I'd like you to shake your neighbor's hand. Just hold that hand and tell your neighbor, how does it feel to touch an original? Praise God. How many of you feel unique this morning? Hallelujah. All right. I hope you brought your original you to church today, not the carbon copy or <laughs> photocopy. All right. Welcome to church. Let me first of all start by apologizing um, to our regular Wednesday attendants, those of us who come on Wednesday. You know, we, we always have a fantastic time on Wednesday. And I've been teaching on relationship. I've been talking about protocols for relationship. Okay? Um, and it's been quite interesting. Um, on, on Wednesday, I was supposed to come um, and do... Um, but I couldn't come. The, the spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Praise God. So I needed to um, take that day out. Um, but we will continue on Wednesday by the grace of God. Amen. I still have two very important topics about relationship to, to teach. So if you're looking for answers, I believe you will find some of them in what I'm going to be teaching um, in the next um, two Wednesdays. Amen. All right, so I want you to come uh, and invite your friends. Wednesday by 5.30 in the evening. Okay, before we go into the Word of God, I also want to talk about something that is in the mind of everybody, or most of us at least. And that is the election. The, the 2020, 20, 2023 election, right? Election for the next president of Nigeria. Um, and so all the preparations are made. The big parties have announced their candidates. So we already know who they are from the big parties. Um... Now, what I want to say, first I'd like to say is to encourage everybody to prepare to vote this time. Amen. Make sure you vote this time. And to make sure that that happens for all of us here, there's one of our members who have used his influence. Um, we spoke about a week or two ago. We talked about this and he told me he was going to make arrangement. And he has made the arrangement. It's our brother OZ. Um, um, and he has 
um, he brought registration to us here. Praise God. All right? So on Thursday and on Wednesday and Thursday from 9 o'clock in the morning till late afternoon, on these two days, everybody from Tetra Edge can come and register. Now, it's not, only for, it's not going to be for us alone, of course. It's going to be for the entire community here, but we're the ones bringing them in a way. So you should be the first to jump on it. Is that okay? Now, they're not going to do it in church because they don't want to be seen to be supporting one religion over the other. So they've agreed to do it in this event center, our neighbors here. Is that okay? So they're going to be here. So please come and register, get your PVC, and prepare to vote. Praise the Lord. Okay? There was a church on the newspaper where the pastor was standing at the door and did not allow those without PVC to enter the church. Good. Now that the registration has been brought to your Dumont, don't be surprised if you see me standing at the door <laughs> next Sunday. Okay, well, you know I won't do that. But everybody register. Okay. Well, if you already have your PVC, this is not for you. I hope you know that. Unless, of course, you want to come and help us do evangelism. Because some of us are going to be around and we're going to do some evangelism around. Maybe strike force, you should take advantage of that. Where is Uzi? <laughs> you have just been laughing at me there if you used to raise your hand. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so everybody, make sure you register. Wednesday, Thursday from 9 o'clock. And thanks to our brother. Everybody must vote. Do you understand? There is a saying that your vote is your voice. In this country, that statement is almost like a cliche right now, isn't it? But our country is reaching a tipping point. The signs are changing. The wind is changing. Something new is happening in our nation. I believe it is answers to prayers. Amen. Now, God may not answer our prayers the way we want it, not all the time, right? Okay? In the book of um, Second Kings, I think, when God was going to remove poverty from a land that had been suffering famine for years, he started with four lepers. Four lepers. Those four lepers did not know that they were part of a chain reaction that God was going to use. This year, your vote will not be insignificant. Do you understand? So I want you to vote. Who should you vote for? <laughs> well, as a pastor, I never tell people who they should vote for. Maybe close to the election, I, 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 I might want to tell you who I, I will vote for. But I recognize that in church here, we have members of PDP, members of APC, and then members of those who are obedient. <laughs> because that one is not a party. Right now, you know. So I'm going to be speaking to everybody. Do you understand? And it, it's, it won't be fair for me. To pick any party over any. But what I can tell you is this. Let us not make the same mistakes we made before, isn't it? Let's not make the same mistake. When Jonathan was here, before Buhari came in, everybody said Jonathan was naive, naive, naive. Shouldn't we have preferred the naivety of Jonathan to what we're experiencing right now? So someone who has experience has come. Okay, you know what you are paying for diesel now. So, I want you to be wise. Vote wisely. In the news, and in a video that of course has circulated all through social media, many of you have watched it, one of the flag bearers for the, one of the big parties, or the flag bearer for one of the big parties, said that this is his turn. 
That is an insult to any intelligent person, as far as I'm concerned. So, if you're going to vote for somebody because he's his turn, and not because he really has an intention to make anything good happen for this nation, I leave that for my opponent to think about. The point I'm making is, let us not be stupid this time. Do we understand? Go and vote. Make it difficult this year for the Riggers. Now, the Riggers will continue to rig as long as you don't show up. The statistic shows that most young educated people don't vote. Educated people don't vote. They give all kinds of reasons. They will shoot. They will do this. They will do that. Let me tell you, in all the major words in this Benin, nothing like that has ever happened. It's usually in the rural areas. So, come out and vote. Make it difficult. You see, you make it easy for them to rig because when you don't show up, you still vote. Do you know that? They will use your name to vote because they will say that in this ward, maybe about 200 people registered in the ward. If only 50 show up, those who are rigging will say 194 showed up, isn't it? So, but if 194 people shows up, it becomes difficult for the riggers to rig. So let us make it difficult for the riggers. The idea here is that even if your candidate doesn't win, let his presence be registered emphatically. Let us send a strong message. To those who think they own this country, that this country only belongs to whoever God will give it to. Somebody say amen. So, um, I was part of a conversation and somebody said this thing and I want to share that with you very quickly. Politics is a game of numbers, right? How many times did Buhari contest before he became president? How many times? Three times. It was the third time that he won. When he won the third time, you know what the um, um, APC did? The APC looked at all of the number of votes that Buhari had gotten. And even though Buhari did not win, he was a formidable content contender, isn't it? Because he was always number two. And he gathered more at, at both points he gathered more than 30% of the national vote, isn't it? In fact, in one of the elections, he gathered up to 40-something percent, isn't it? So, the APC thought that somebody like that is a formidable what? Contender. So they thought, we bring our votes and add to the one that are already loyal to him, then he won. Let us make sure that this year, we make our voice heard. Win or lose, let our voice be heard. Do you understand? If we lose, let it not be like a landslide. Or if your candidate lose, don't, it should not be a landslide. It should, be, it should have registered his presence. That is a formidable contender. This is what I want us to do this year's election. Nobody should sit at home on that day Get up, make sure you vote. Only fools will collect money this year. Anybody who collects money to vote is a... Let's say that together. Anybody who collects money to vote is a what? Yeah. It's a big fool. In the compu. There's a word you remember people use for fool or dead. Big or dead. And now let's get to the word of God, okay? Praise God. So now let's get to what I really want to say today. I, I thought I should say that on the sidelines. 
So I've been doing this teaching about Tetra Edge. Those of you who are joining us for the first time today, this message might come to you as a surprise because it's, it's not a regular teaching because I'm talking about Tetra Edge. And I've been doing this now for the last three weeks. We're rounding it off today. I'm hoping that some of you today will make a decision and jump into the pool and become part of what we're doing and not just sitting on the fences or on the fence. So I started by talking about our vision, our mandate, our vision, our mission, our strategy. And then I talked about um, also how we intend to measure that growth. Um, I've talked about that in the last three weeks. Today, I want to talk about our own processes here, what we've put together here to make sure that all of the things that we've talked about happen. So, if you've never seen a car before, but you came into a shop where they're trying to pull and put a car together, what you see may be the nuts and the bolts, right? You will see maybe the engine block, the gearbox, the pistons, stabilizer linkage, exhaust pipes, the exhaust itself, some tires, you know, and different things to put, to put the car together, right? By looking at the parts, you may not be able to see the car, isn't it? The only way you can know what is being built is if you have been shown a picture or the blueprint of what is going to be built. Are we together? All right, so now that's how it is for us here. We've put different groups together. And if you look at, if you just zero in on one group, you may not be able to see the big thing that we're building, right? That's why I started with the big picture, to show you exactly what it is we're achieving. But every part comes together to build it. That one thing that we're trying to build. And what is that one thing? To inspire love for God and people, isn't it? All right? So here is the thing, every part is essential for the car to function, right? So let's assume you've put everything together, the gearbox is working, the engine is working, everything is working fine, and then you finally fix the tires, but you refuse to put the nuts that hold the tires to the wheel. What's going to happen? The car may take off, but not too long down the road it will grind to a halt. Why? Because the nuts that are missing will cause the tires to pull out. And even cause some damage. In other words, every part is essential. Every part. Every part is essential. The nut and bolts are as important as the engine and the gearbox. They are all providing different functions to get the car to operate. Every part of our ministry here is important and essential to what we do. And I'll show you a a picture or um, what is it called? I'll show you something. I don't know. Words are vanishing from my mouth. I'll show you something very um, just now about the process of how everything comes together, you know, to build, to achieve what we are looking at achieving. Praise God. All right, so let's put that good. So here is the part. Now, this is how we've designed our flow. In other words, we've looked at, you know, everything, and we say that this is the, this is the journey we want everybody who comes to Tetra Edge to make here. And, and by the time they get to a certain point of that journey, they will be exactly where we believe God wants them to be. Amen. And last week, I told you who we're expecting you to become. The person who exhibits our five W's. Praise the Lord. Okay? So, from the community, which is the place where we get to share our message, 
in Benin City, which is our primary location, and to every other person that connects to us online. And there are people outside the country who are dependent on the content that we, we produce here every week. Okay? They do not fail to listen to our messages and they will follow the services and they are still 100% part and parcel of what we're doing here. And so they are also part of that community. We can reach out to them through that as well. So our online on audience, as well as our city here where we are um, physically located, represents our community. Now, out of that community, some people will come, right? When they come, either through evangelism or a friend invites someone to church, we, they become members of our congregation. Now, they become members of our congregation by the time they start to attend our services regularly, like many of you are. Many of you are stuck at congregation. You come every Sunday, you give your offering. Some of you give your tithe. I know that not everybody gives their tithe here, but I'm hoping that all, many of you will grow to the point where you can trust God enough to start giving your tithe. But as a Christian, you lose if you snooze. <laughs> I'm trying to... Okay. Amen. So, you're member of our congregation, and we recognize your place here, and you're important to us. Praise God. Um, and, of course, your growth is important, but because we don't want you stuck at congregation. We want you to move from congregation to become committed. The committed in church here are those people who are, who belong to a functional group. We use the word committed, not in its classical definition, but to be able to um, discriminate <laughs> or distinguish, because discriminate can be seen in a negative light. So it's not necessarily, but it's actually discrimination. Really, when you sort things in colors, you're discriminating between colors. That's, but, of course, I know how we, we, we look at words. But fit, the word that will fit it better for us is to distinguish between those who come on Sundays alone, and maybe sometimes our Wednesday service, and those who are actually you know, part of our, who are contributing to fulfill our mission and vision. Not everybody who comes here on the Sunday is, is participating in that. Only the committed are. Because they're the ones who either sing, you know, or they arrange the cars outside, or they teach in the children's church or youth church, or they're the ones making phone calls, for those who didn't come to church on Sundays, and all the different things that are happening behind the scene. These are our committed. Without our committed, we will have no church. Praise God. And this is how we expect every single person to be part of the process that we've put in place. Now, of course, from committed to become core. Core are those who are committed but are now leading other committed. So they're either small group leaders or they're leading a functional group. Praise God. All right. Now, of course, we intend to grow not just in one location by the grace of God. We intend to be in many locations in this city, in this state, and who knows, maybe around the nation. But we'll take every step as God gives us grace. Somebody say amen. amen. So, every single one of us is important to getting this job done. For us to be able to build or do what we believe God has called us to do, every part is important. So let's go back to the analogy I gave. You see those knots and bolts and pistons and all of that? That's you and I. So some of us are going to be the engine. Some of us will be the gearbox. Some of us will be the stabilizer linkage. 
Some will be the knots. Because all of us cannot be everything at the same time. So it takes all of those different parts to come together to build something that all of us can love. So if we do not have, if we have all of the parts, they all come together from engine to boat on the tires. That means that every single person in this room is essential to what God has called us to do. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. The person who plays the keyboard and the person who leads the worship to the person who puts the microphone together and to those who are outside, you know, leading, um, um, helping people park their cars and, and to those who are telling you where to sit and even those during the week that make the phone calls and call um, our our guests when they come in for the first time and encourage them to come back for our services, those who go out for evangelism, everybody is vital. The sound guy is not more important than the person who is doing more, who is going out for evangelism. Everybody. Everybody gets to play a role. And if we play our role properly, then we will be able to build that big thing that you're saying. It is, if you only just look at music, you may not see the big picture, isn't it? Because it's, we're not just singing. Neither is a car just a tire, right? We want everything when it comes together to inspire others to love God and love people. This is where you're invited to join. Every single one of us. Now, many of us have a fantastic idea of church. Some people think that when we come to church, we meet perfect people and then we just join them and then maybe you too will now become perfect, isn't it? But that's far from the story, really. I mean, if you may not agree with what I'm saying, but that doesn't mean that that's how you behave. And how do I know that? I know that because of how many people complain about church, isn't it? So you, they come to church and they complain. I, 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 don't, I don't like the people in the church. I don't, you know. Your complaint becomes how you show what your expectations are, isn't it? You cannot be disappointed unless you had expectations in the first place, isn't it? There's no disappointment without expectation. So your disappointments are just an expression of expectations not met. And many times we come to church because, oh, this perfect person, no, 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 that's not how it happens. It's imperfect people coming together to build something and hope that they will grow together to achieve something bigger than them. It's two imperfect people coming together to hold each other accountable. Some of you have friends today who are leading you astray, isn't it? Let me ask you a question. What's the alternative of church? After people have complained about church, I used to wonder, what's the alternative? Is it that you sit down with your friends with Guinness and um, smell of ice, and then you're talking about how terrible women are, and someone is going to encourage you in that meeting to cheat on your wife? Is that what you want to go for? Is that the better thing? Or you're sitting down there with your girlfriends and all of you are complaining how bad men are, how terrible men are, how polygamous men are. And then you have women who, would, who will be sharing and talking to you about how not to trust your husband. Many of the conversations we have and the friends that we keep outside of church make things worse, not better. But in church... 
You can come together. Start with people you don't know at first. Because that's the risk we're willing to take, isn't it? But what's the alternative? This is better. Because in church, it is expected that the people you come together with will expect you to pray. When you come to church, don't you expect people to pray? Don't you expect the person, your neighbor you're sitting with to be praying? Now, here's the idea, because you expect them to be praying, that's why you're disappointed. But what God expects is that together, you start to pray. You can hold each other accountable to making sure that we are doing the very things that God intends for us to do. So we come together. In our meetings, we pray. We may prepare for an activity in church, but we also have the opportunity to pray and to study a scripture together or an idea that is communicated from the Bible or a principle and talk about how you can apply it on your daily basis. That is by far better. And let me tell you, that's what you need. So Tetra Edge and the dream is to be a place that gives you what you need, not just what you want. Because many of the things you want are not good for you. The Bible says, and God shall supply all of your needs, not your wants, needs. Because your needs are the things you need. They are the things you cannot live without or you cannot grow without. Plants need sunlight to grow. They don't want sunlight. They need it because without it, they cannot grow. The things you need are essential for your development and growth. You cannot be the person God intends you to be without them. The church family can provide what you need. Praise the Lord. I am telling you, five minutes of prayer in church is better than two hours of beer drinking in the club. And it will do you more good. It will build you. The first time a good person ever did something stupid was because he was hanging around people who do stupid things. True or false? But I can also tell you that the first time someone began to develop prayer and the study of the word of God was because he began to hang around those who were doing the same. Or at least who wanted to do the same. Praise the Lord. This is where that happens. When we build activities that helps us to... No, let, me, let, me, let me say something here. Let, let, let me just try because, you know, one of the things I try never to do is to be religious. Try to say things as, honest, as honestly as possible I can. People talk about, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have... I've seen people who never had time they have two children outside. How? No time? Wow. Okay. Sure, we're mostly adults in this place. How many of you know that it takes time to produce children? One heavily visually does not produce children. Don't worry, I have five children. I know what I'm talking about. I'm a veteran. <laughs> hmm. See, many of the things that we tell ourselves, we lie to ourselves about, and it just lies. And let me tell you, you are the worst marketer to yourself. I hope you know that. Let me tell you, and you can sit down for the next 30 minutes and convince yourself that something stupid is good, and you will do it. We are our worst nightmare. That's why you need community to grow or to be bad. <laughs> Anyone. 
Actually, you don't need community to be bad. You can be bad on your own. But you need community. You need community. Church provides that. You don't have to like it. Because, you know, in my experience, I've discovered that most of the things we need, we don't like them. But if you want to grow, if you want to become the person God wants you to be, then you have to give yourself over to the things you need. That's why the Bible says that narrow is the way and straight is the gate. Narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leads to life. It comes with a decision you make. And when I was teaching about divine direction earlier this year, I told you that destination is determined by decision, not just by desire. In other words, we make a decision to be part of what God is doing. This is how you become who God wants you to be. And I really want to challenge you. And I want to ask you to be courageous this morning and not just go for what you want, but go for what you need. Are there many times I do not want to come to church? What do you think the answer is to that? Absolutely, yes. In fact, there are many times I don't want to be a pastor anymore. Do you know how many times I've wanted to give up pastoring? Some of you have no idea the pressure that a pastor can be. You get some phone calls and you hear all of these things and you just tell yourself, I not do again. In fact, there were times when I have just, I, I just pictured some, just said, Pastor Harry, take over the church. I am going. We all want things, but they're not God's will for us, isn't it? The reason I'm here is because I choose to be. It's a decision. It's not because it's comfortable. And if you're looking for comfort, then you're not looking for growth. You can't have both. You either want growth or you want comfort but they don't sit in the same place. Growth is what we offer here. Amen. It is my hope, and this is not an arithmetic. Can you put, put, put this stuff up? This is not an arithmetic or, you know, where you just say two plus two is equal to four. It doesn't exactly work that way. And so it is my hope that people go through this process and by the time they become core, By the time they become core, they will be worshippers, generous. That's the willing givers. They know how to treat people properly. In other words, they love, they're warm. They witness for Christ and they're selfless. They serve. You see it in what they do. They make themselves available for God's work. Do you know that for many of you, if you do three things properly, every night when you go to bed, you go to bed tired. Three things. You do your work well, you treat your family properly, and you do God's work. Do you know that? It's enough to keep you busy. I'm telling you. How many of you know the energy it takes to pay attention to your children? Ask all the new fathers right now. I have a child that, well, till now, it's just recently now that she started sleeping throughout the night. You know, as parents, my children are here. Are they here? Or they've gone to class? 
They should not hear everything. Close your ears. <laughs> See, and sometimes, eh, you just, I know those of you who are fathers here, you feel the same way. You just feel like locking them in one box and forget you have children for, for at least. <laughs> Dr. Uche, you understand what I'm saying now? You have to shout one thing 20, 345 times before somebody will hear. Leave there! Leave there! Leave! And so what some people do is that they leave the house and go and be clubbing with their friends to avoid the very things they need to do to raise their children. Escaping. You don't grow that way. We see children today who don't want to have anything to do with their parents. There's so many. So many. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't want to have anything. When you, the most important things in your life, you don't tell your parents. My wife and I made a decision that we won't want that for our kids. If they can't talk to me, they talk to her. At least they're talking to one parent. Praise the Lord. At least they can trust us with the most important decisions of their lives. So when I finish work, I come home. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the point I'm just making here is that if you do these three things, I'm telling you, you will go to bed tired. After you've paid attention to your children, and, and if you're in a group, and your leader is calling you, or you, music, you don't listen to a song, you don't score your song, or the um, hosts are telling you, if you don't this, don't, you will be tired when you get home. You will sleep, die, and resurrect in the morning. And that is the best way to live, trust me. God intends for you to become the best version of yourself. That's what we hope this will do for you as well. It's our hope. That's what I said. If you give yourself to all everything that we've put in place, all the trainings we've put in place, all the programs we've put in place, and the activities you have to do weekly, your life will be better for it. I want to say one more thing here, and, and I know I'm going to be overshooting my time just a little bit, but I, I, because sometimes, some of us don't see the connection with the quality of life we live and our service to God. I don't, we don't see the connection, but it's very clear to me, and I'm praying that God will give me the language to make it clear to you too. Some time ago, a couple, they were having challenges in their home, and they came to me for counseling. Actually, the man was the one misbehaving. And after the woman had told me many, many things that the guy was doing, guy was, I said, okay, you know what? This thing is affecting you so much that if you're not careful, you too will join him. Praise the Lord. So I said to her, I said, the key to saving your husband is to be committed in church. Does that even make sense? Doesn't make it doesn't sound like what are you talking about? We have to focus on changing the person. But if you've ever been part of my teaching, you know that set, um, um, uh, having a goal to change a person is a walk in futility. It just leads to more problems. It doesn't it? Doesn't work? You would just sign a contract with frustration. But many people don't see the connection. They don't see that many times it is the state of their heart that affects everything around them. The sad story is that she did not listen to me. And not quite long, she became guilty of the very things she was complaining about her husband. So everything went to bad to worse. So let me tell you something. Church activities don't make people Christians. It is Christians that do church activities. You understand? But let me tell you how it is. When Christians do church activities, they become better Christians. They grow. 
Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you. This is a call. This is a call to become courageous. There's some people in this church right now. I know for a fact, and I, I don't always tell them, but I know that it is the responsibility here in church that have kept them from doing the, making the most stupid decisions in their lives. They could have. But every time they think about their commitment to church and to God, they owe themselves. Isn't that better? Think about it. He doesn't do everything, but it's definitely a major part of your growth. Let's not take it for granted, the things I'm telling you right now. Because you're very family, and even your children's future can be dependent on what I'm telling you right now. I want you to be courageous today. Join a group. Start the process. Become a person that inspires this Benin city. That inspires people in this city to love God. And to love people. It starts by getting born again. But many of you are already there. The next step. Join a group. Praise God. Joining a group does not answer all your questions, but it will definitely put you on the road to finding the right answers. So I want to encourage everybody. So what I want to do very quickly right now is to talk about the different groups. I'll call their leaders up here, and I want you to sign up with anyone. If you do not know what your talent is, join anyone first. Do you understand? Start with what is available. Then, before you begin to discover what your own gifting and talents are, where you will produce the most. But start, just pick any one. Start from somewhere. The Bible says a dream comes through the multitude of business. Amen. Ecclesiastics. When you get busy doing, then your dream comes to pass. Amen. All right, so let me quickly do this. The first group I want to talk about is Strike Force. Now, we've designed the, the groups, the way we've done it is that we've designed it in such a way that there are four major functions that each of these, so we call these groups principal that they provide outreach, encouragement, um, enrich, create the inspiration and the, what we need here, you know, for people to grow spiritually, and then um, the training that we need. All right, so these are the four major groups alongside with our children's church and youth church. Strike Force Outreach. They do the street outreach or hospital outreach. Thank you. So that's Uzi in charge of Strike Force. Eddie Force is led by Mudupe. Now, Eddie Force is made up of our music, media, and host. Media is involved with everything that happens inside this hall. And uh, that's the lighting, the videos, the sound, technical, stage arrangement, and all of that. Ediforce is responsible for creating the experience that we have every service day. That's why these three groups, you know, they're the ones that get that done. All right? Mudupa is the person to talk to if you want to join music, host, or media. Host, parking, ushering. Welcoming people, that's the job. Protocol, that's what they do. They host us every service, making sure that everybody knows where they're supposed to be and are comfortable within the premise. We have training. Training is the one that provides the curriculum we use for our, our small group meetings, uh, as well as um, all the training that is required to move from congregation to committed and to core. We have four levels of training here that we have prepared or are still preparing, trying to finish up, but most of them are ready. Starting point, which that's the one that everybody here have gone through. We also have discipleship, we have leadership, and then we have ministry, ministers in training. That's what training does. And if you're interested in being part of those people who help to put the curriculum together 
and teach in some of the classes. Training is that you don't have to know how to um, teach to join them, but hopefully you can grow to become a teacher after you do. Amen. But if you love to and you want to grow your knowledge of God, that's a good, 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 good group to join because they have these conversations quite regularly. But teaching is not all that goes on. Organizing is also a major part of what they do. So some of the people who are there may never teach, but they will help to organize, isn't it? They make sure that everything that is necessary for every class to take place, you know, is put um, um, together, you know, so that's training. And then finally, we have retention. Pastor Henry is the one in charge of retention. Retention are our encouragers. They're the one who calls when someone doesn't come to church, they do the visitation, and they take care of our special guests, mostly our special guests. So when people come to church for the first time, Pastor Henry's group is making sure that they keep coming and then they become committed. They close the back door. We can't do this. It's people that would do it. You can't expect me to call all of you now. Is that possible? As much as I would love to, it's not possible. Praise the Lord. But retention will call you under my authority. Praise God. And that will be church calling. Encouraging. We do this together. Like I said, if you just look at one group alone, you won't, if you focus on, you won't be, but when everything comes together, praise the Lord, it forms a very beautiful picture. It's amazing the things we can accomplish when we work together. And I am calling us to do so. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to pray. Those of you who are sitting on the fences, you've not made up your mind exactly the things you want to do, I want you to just pray and say, okay, God, use me. Because I want you to join a group today. As soon as we close. I want you to join a group today. Just ask God, you know, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two groups I did not add to this. Our children's church and youth church. Those two groups, they need teachers. The children's church needs teachers. The youth church needs men mentors who will mentor the teenagers. Our youth church is made up of those in secondary school. Amen. And mostly teenagers. And so, um, if you want to teach the children or you want to be with those in secondary school, you want to impact them, these are the people that, that you need to join. Um, where is the person? Uh, where is Raleigh? Okay. So, then Dr. Oche is here for the children's church. So, Dr. Oche, please, can you come forward? Praise God. Now, for those of you who want to join the youth church, Talk to Mrs. Um, <laughs> Mrs. J. Sudun Saint, Mrs. J.D. Ose, Ose is her name, okay. Then Dr. Uche is in charge of the children's church, amen. Please start from anywhere. If you don't know where to start from, just pick anyone. Then when you discover that that's not the place you can give your best, you are free to join another one. Is that Okay. Nobody's tying your leg and saying you must be in a particular group. But whichever group you decide to join, stay committed there. And let's begin something that will change this city for good. In Jesus' name, amen.